हैं और आपसे थोड़ी देर में वर्ल्ड फूड इंडिया 2017 का उद्घाटन वो करेंगे और तस्वीरों में आप जो फूड प्रोसेसिंग मिनिस्टर हैं और हरसिमरत कौर बादल और साध्वी निरंजन जो एम हैं उनको भी आप देख सकते हैं मिनिस्टर फॉर फूड प्रोसेसिंग इंडस्ट्रीज During the event, an investor facilitation portal, Nivesh Bandhu, will be launched to assist investors make informed investi- investment decisions. Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi being greeted by both national and international delegates This is indeed a unique event the first of its kind to be held in India World Food India 2017 and it has evinced great interest by countries all across the globe India really is a sitting giant in the food processing industry and we expect to see great expansion in the coming years in fact world food india 2017 is expected to bring about 10 billion dollar boost for the indian food industry world food india 2017 is set to place india on the global food map The 3-day mega event will showcase the best of the domestic and global food industry and will serve as a vibrant knowledge sharing platform for industry stakeholders connecting Indian and global businesses to make the most of opportunities offered by the Indian food processing sector. And to quote The Honorable Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi The world's keenness to engage with India has risen. The world is seeing India with a ray of hope. This of course is a new ray of hope for the food processing industry in India. A new dawn where the world will see what India has to offer. And India has to offer a wide variety of cuisines of foods from all across the length and breadth of the country some of the industry captains participating in WFI from across the globe and India includes the chairman of the board of directors Nestle Mr Paul Bauk Mr Pietro Boon chief operating officer and CEO of Metro Cash and Carry Mr Brian McNamara CEO GSK Consumer Healthcare Ms Amanda Sari President Food Unilever the CEO of Walmart in India and also Amazon India a total of 60 global CEOs including the 
the Asia-Pacific leadership of leading companies, we'll be interacting with leading CEOs. A massive exhibition spread over 40,000 square meters in the verdant sea hexagon lawns of India is expected to attract significant footfalls. More than 800 global companies representing 22 countries and domestic companies will be exhibiting. There has been a special focus on farmer producer organizations and women entrepreneurs to connect them to corporates, international and Indian, to increase opportunities for sourcing and business. arrival of the Honorable Prime Minister of Latvia, Mr. Maris Kuziniskis, who will be speaking here during the inaugural session. It's interesting how countries both small and big emerging countries are taking an interest in this mega event organized here in India for the first time. It is usually said that food diplomacy, and here we see the Honorable President of the Republic of Armenia, Mr. Sharj Sargasayan, who is expected in a short while from now, but various diplomats from various countries, and here he is, Mr. Sarj Sargasayan, the Honorable President of the Republic of Armenia. The Ministry of Food Processing Industries theme pavilion provides an exciting new view of India's offering to the world in terms of products, a geomapping of produce, availability and mega food parks through multiple technologies like virtual and augmented reality. A few private moments here in the leaders' lounge at the Gyan Bhavan. A great sense of warmth in Bonhomi. Food, they say, is the best way to connect with other people because it is, after all, the most important part of human life. Cuisines from different countries and from different parts of various countries represent the culture, the tradition, the likes and dislikes of the peoples of that country. And so when countries connect through food, it is a more personal connection where people get to know each other. And of course, it provides a huge impetus for business to these various countries. In the modern context, World Food India 2017 is definitely a new platform, a very important platform
to attract business, to interact with these various countries from all across the globe. 2,500 delegates present here from 40 countries, 26 Indian states, all the states of the Northeast, the Seven Sisters present here. The President and the Prime Minister of London. As the Honorable Prime Minister and uh, the delegates arrive here on the base, we hand you over to the girls. Good morning, Honorable Prime Minister, Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, Honorable Chief Ministers, Senior Officials, Global and Domestic CEOs of Leading Companies, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Ministry of Food Processing Industries, Government of India, a very warm welcome to the inaugural function of World Food India 2017. This is the first of its kind international event in the food processing sector in India. Is Samaru ka mukhyo deshe hai, Veshvik tata bhartiya business leaders ko ek saath lana, tata Veshvik khadya udyog ke liye. भारत को पसंदीदा निवेश गंतव्य और विनिर्माण केंद्र के रूप में स्थापित करना। We are honoured to have with us as our chief guest Sri Narendra Modi, Honourable Prime Minister of India. We have with us on the days His Excellency Mr. Serge Sargsyan, President of the Republic of Armenia, His Excellency Mr. Maris Kuchinskis, Prime Minister of Latvia, Shrimati Har Simran Kaur Badal. Minister for Food Processing Industries, Government of India, Mr. Branislav Nedimovic, Minister for Agriculture, Forestry and Water Management, Serbia, Sri Chandra Babu Naidu, Honorable Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, Sri Raman Singh, Honorable Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh, Sadhvi Niranjan Jyoti, Honorable Minister of State for Food Processing Industries, Government of India, Mr. Peter Blazer, Vice Minister, Federal Ministry for Food and Agriculture, Germany, Mr. Esben Lunde Larsen, Minister for Environment and Food, Denmark, Mr. Rashid Bathi Uddin, Minister for Industry and Commerce, Sri Lanka, Mr. Ivan Skal Faroto, Deputy Minister for Economic Development, Italy, Mr. Witold Slovik, Deputy Minister for Economic Development, Poland, Mr. Ted McKinney, Under Secretary, USA, Mr. Mazakazu Aifuchi, Minister for Agriculture, Japan. Mr. Frederick Wassenaar, Minister for Agriculture, Netherlands. Mr. Noel Tata, Chairman of Trent Limited and MD Tata International. Mr. Peter Bune, COO, Metro AG and CEO, Metro Cash and Carry. Ms. Amanda Suri, Global President of Foods, Unilever. Mr. Paul Bulka, Chairman of the Board of Directors, Nestle, Ms. Shobhana Kamineni, President, CII, and Sri J.P. Meena, Secretary, Ministry of Food Processing Industries, Government of India. Is Bhavya Samaru ki Prerna Sroth hai, Mananiya Khadya Prasanskaran Udyog Mantri, Shrimati Har Simrat Kaur Badal. The Honorable Minister has not only conceptualized the event, but is also the guiding spirit behind it. Mananiya Mantri Mahodaya Sanivedan hai ap kripya apne swagat bhash ke liye padhare. Honorable Prime Minister of India, Shri Narendra Modi ji, Excellency President of Republic of Armenia, Excellency Prime Minister of Latvia, Distinguished ministers and officials from our partner and focus countries, Denmark, Germany, Japan, Netherlands, Italy. Distinguished ministers from Poland, Serbia, Sri Lanka, USA. Chief ministers of Andhra Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. My ministerial colleagues. Industry captains from across the globe and India. 
senior officials from states and governments, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor and privilege to welcome each and every one of you here today. For those who have traveled across the globe to be with us here, I extend my warmest facilitations and heartfelt gratitude. Today is indeed a historic day in the history of the food processing sector of India. Our first mega event, World Food India 2017, has brought together on one platform, under one venue, for the first time, 7,000 stakeholders across 60 countries, over 8,000 exhibitors, more than 75 international and national policymakers, heads of states and governments, 60 top global CEOs from across the globe, more than 100 top Indian CV CEOs from across India, 12 ministerial and official delegations, 18 business delegations, round tables with the Honorable Finance Minister, Prime Minister, Commerce Minister, interaction with seven central ministers and 37 state ministers, over 36 conferences and sessions with over 5,000 B2B, B2G meetings planned over the next three days and an expected over $11 billion worth of MOUs to be signed over the next three days. <laughs> Under the dynamic leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister, as India gears up for a revolution in the food processing sector, it is absolutely clear that the global companies are eagerly looking towards India for collaboration. As one of the fastest growing economies in the world, having a 1.3 billion population base, a $600 billion retail sector set to treble to 1.3 trillion by 2020, and 70% of this sector in food retail. India is the third largest economy in terms of purchasing power, and our demand for food is set to double over the next five years. Being the sixth largest food and grocery market in the world, indeed, is, India is indeed a destination that merits global attention in the food sector. Being one of the largest producers of food in the world, as well as one of the largest consumers, we are keen to improve our processing levels from the, from the uh, at the moment, what we process only 10% of what we produce. To process more, to reduce our wastages, have more food available for our increasing population. The government over the last three years has taken a number of reforms and a number of economic policies have been put in place to promote food processing. Creation of 42 mega food parks across India with a hub and spoke model of creating common facilities for food processing where investors may come and plug and play without having to put in the entire capital expenditure which goes into setting up this huge industry. It's an economical way of putting up more units. By putting up a unit in every mega food park, it makes you closer to your potential retail markets as well as helps you meet pricing in a competitive manner. We're working towards creating a cold chain grid throughout our country for seamless transfer of food from production to consumption. The recently launched Pradhan Mantri Kisan Sampada Yojana, a new scheme envisioned by the Honorable Prime Minister, where over $1 billion worth of invest incentives is going to be distributed to create infrastructure worth $5 billion US dollars over the next three years, with major policy decisions like 100% FDI in retail of food manufactured and produced in India we are working to create huge markets that this infrastructure can feed. Goods and service tax, one nation, one tax, a major economic reform undertaken by the Honorable Prime Minister recently has indeed made India a destination where ease of doing business has now become a reality for all investors. Under the dynamic vision of our Honorable Prime Minister to reform, perform and transform India's food economy, we look towards partnering and collaborating with the best technologies in the world. In Sanskrit, we say, 
Vasudeva Kutumbam, Kutumbakam, which means the whole world is one family. And in Gurbani, our great Guru says, Ek Pita, Ekaske Hambarak. There is one father, we are all his children. This is our planet, we are equal stakeholders. As we move towards 2050, where the world population is set to increase by 25% and the demand of food set to increase by over 50%, we all need to come together to wage a war against food waste, to ensure adequate food for all. Let's all come together, learn from each other's technologies and expertise, share our experiences and our technologies so that what may be a business opportunity for one country may be potential for another country. And with our mutual collaborations and partnerships, as we expand our economies and as we expand our footprints, may we also nourish humanity by ensuring adequate food for all in times to come. I once again take this occasion to thank each and every one of you being here, especially excellencies from Latvia and Armenia, and my personal and heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you for the tremendous response and faith that you have shown by being here for World Food India 2070s. As we look towards discovering newer markets and increasing our footprints, may World Food India provide you with those opportunities of collaboration. And may the Ministry of Food Processing, I may assure you at this point, stands committed to help and handhold industries for concretizing and fructifying partnerships. With these words, I especially thank the Honorable Prime Minister for his faith, his support, his vision to double farmers' income and to transform India's food economy, and for being here today to be a part of this event. Sir, as always, we thank you for your leadership and continuously look towards you for your guidance. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. We will now screen a film on opportunities in the food processing sector in India. India is a land of vast opportunities and is the fastest growing amongst the major economies of the world. Under the dynamic leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, the Union government has been successful in building confidence and conviction in the nation's growth narrative and in making India a preferred investment destination through initiatives such as Making India, Digital India, Skill India, among others. These strategic initiatives have also opened up huge investment opportunities in the food processing sector. With 127 agroclimatic zones, there is perhaps nothing under the sun that India cannot grow. India has a vast production base with 514 million metric tons of agri-horticulture products. It is the largest producer of milk in the world, the second largest producer of cereals, fruits and vegetables, and the second largest producer of seafood and fisheries. India is also the leading consumer of food in the world, with a population of 1.3 billion. 65% of Indians are below 35 years, with large disposable incomes and changing consumer preferences. This demographic is driving the Indian retail sector, currently estimated at 600 billion US dollars, and expected to reach 1.3 trillion US dollars by the year 2020. India also holds the future to global food demand. The country produces in abundance and feeds so many, and yet it processes only 10% of its agricultural products. Imagine if India reaches its optimal processing potential. By 2050, when the global population touches 9 billion, India will be the food factory of the world. With a number of progressive policies, fast developing modern infrastructure, and ease of doing business initiatives, 
India presents immense opportunities across the food value chain. 100% FDI in food manufacturing and also 100% FDI in trading, including e-commerce in food products manufactured and produced in India, provide a burgeoning market for food processors and retailers. There are vast opportunities for technology suppliers, equipment manufacturers, processors, financing food business, infrastructure development, food testing labs, research and skill development. In a dynamic initiative to boost food processing sector, the government has sanctioned 42 mega food parks. The government is creating cold chain infrastructure to link farmers to consumers seamlessly and to create a cold chain grid in the entire country. Under the new mission, Pradhan Mantri Kisan Sampada Yojana, the government aims to leverage investment of 5 billion US dollars to create additional supply chain and food processing infrastructure. Another major reform, ENAM, a pan-India electronic trading portal, serves to network agricultural markets across the country. GST. A path-breaking tax reform has been introduced, which is a major step in the direction of one country, one market, one tax. Under the GST, almost 75% of processed food is below the 12% tax slab. As a result of all these reforms, in the last one year alone, India has jumped 30 places to enter the top 100 in the global ease of doing business rankings. And now, the Ministry of Food Processing Industries brings to the table World Food India 2017. The first ever mega global event in the food processing sector that brings together major stakeholders across the global food value chain onto a single platform. India welcomes you to showcase, connect and collaborate with 29 states, more than 60 countries, along with partner countries, Denmark, Germany and Japan, focus countries, Italy and Netherlands, along with more than 350 top CEOs and over 3,000 B2B and B2G meetings. Our potential is your opportunity. Come, be a part of India's growth story and transform the food economy. We have in our midst a galaxy of global CEOs who have specially traveled to be with us for this occasion. I now invite them to share their views on the growth potential of India. I first request Mr. Paul Bulka, Chairman of the Board of Directors of Nestle, a household name in India, to kindly speak on the occasion. Honorable Prime Minister, Ministers, Excellencies, Dignitaries, Ladies and Gentlemen, I am very happy and honored to be here today on this memorable occasion, the inauguration of the World Food India 2017. My sincere thank you for inviting me to this important event. Let me first of all say that I'm excited to be back in India. I have uh, visited your country many, many times, and every time I find the pace of development impressive, especially in the last few years. Above all, I'm very, every time I come here, I'm fascinated by the vibrancy and warmth of its people. Honorable Prime Minister, I would like to congratulate you and your team on India's climbing by 30 places in the recent World Bank report on ease of doing business. This is relevant, this is impressive, and will encourage investment. Nestle's history in India goes back a very long time. For more than a century, for 105 years to be precise, we have been a partner of the country and its people, offering nutritious products, sourcing raw materials locally, and creating employment opportunities and contributing to the economy. We set up our first factory at, at Mogar, 
in the Punjab in 1961. And today we have six manufacturing units. Directly and indirectly, we provide livelihood opportunities over more than one million people. And behind our success is the solid support we have always received from governments, both at center and state level. We are thankful for the support. And yes, I know we, we had, had some challenging times not so long ago when our heritage of food safety was called to question. But I'm proud to say we have overcome these. Ladies and gentlemen, the roots of our company were laid more than 150 years ago in Switzerland by Henri Nestlé. He invented the product Farine Lactée, which saved the life of a child. And ever since, we have lived up to the purpose of enhancing quality of life and contributing to a healthier future. And we are not alone in this. Many companies around the world and many here in India share this purpose and wish to work together to help this develop answers to today's challenges. And the challenges society face are huge. Addressing them cannot be done alone. No single organization, no single institution, nor government, nor NGO has all the answers. Addressing the societal challenges requires collective action multi-stakeholder approaches and initiatives. Let's take food security for an instance. Yes, our food system has come a long way. But even so, the global food system is not delivering as it should. It is not delivering on the actual needs. It is challenged. First, agriculture productivity needs to be improved. Even more so as we will have to feed millions more in the future. Water scarcity is a major challenge today. The withdrawal of water is more than what is sustainable, and 70% of all water usage is in agriculture. And about one third of food is wasted worldwide and more in some areas. With 70% of the global poverty in rural areas, investment in building agriculture capacity is crucial. Food security needs to be given top priority. In partnerships, we can find solutions, and the private sector can play an important role. Together, we can overcome this challenge. And the food we eat has to be safe. That brings me to food safety. For us, food safety is not negotiable. We take pride in providing safe, quality food to our consumers, whichever country we operate in. We are not the only one. It is at the core of what responsible food companies do. In that sense, and for that purpose, we have recently inaugurated the Nestle Food Safety Institute here in India, which will work collaboratively with all relevant stakeholders. The institute is aimed at building and sharing knowledge and practices through collaborative partnerships to support and strengthen the food safety environment here in India. Ladies and gentlemen, Food safety and food security are just two examples. There is so much more that we all do and that we should do. We will ha all have to work together and, and trust and share expertise, knowledge and experiences. And before closing, I would like now to wish this event, World Food India 2017, all success which it richly deserves. We at Nestle are definitely proud to be part of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We have with us Ms. Amanda Suri, the global president of Foods Unilever, a well-known global brand. May I request you, madam, to kindly share your views with us? Honorable Prime Minister, Excellencies and Dignitaries, Ladies and Gentlemen. It is an honor and pleasure to be here today at this prestigious gathering. The world is looking towards India. India has been at the forefront of economic growth for the last several years and ranks amongst the top 10 countries in the world in GDP terms. 
India has already established itself as a powerhouse in information technology. It's home already to more than one billion mobile subscribers. India has gifted to the world the power of natural healing and health through yoga, Ayurveda, and your honorable prime minister has been a key proponent, proponent of this movement, catalyzing larger populations to embrace the traditional wisdom of Indian sages and texts. It is also very heartening to note that India has jumped 42 places in just three years in the World Bank rankings on ease of doing business. The opportunity for foods in India is huge. With a population of 1.3 billion, a burgeoning middle class, a youth segment larger than the entire population of the United States of America, and the increasing rate of urbanization, the opportunity of providing nutritious, safe, and tasty food to over 1 billion people must be addressed. These trends, coupled with India's rich natural agricultural resources, create an optimal environment for the processed foods industry to accelerate and reach the levels of its developed counterparts. The need for food security, right food solutions, and consumer education has never been greater. We at Unilever are excited about the India Foods Opportunity. Unilever has a globally loved portfolio of foods and refreshment brands. Kisan, Brookbond, Knorr, Quality Walls, to name a few. Some of these brands have been present in India for over 70 years. We are committed to bring to bear our expertise and experience in identifying emerging needs, educating people on making informed food choices, and providing the highest quality products that are sourced and distributed sustainably. At this point, I must talk about our Unilever Sustainable Living Plan. This is our blueprint for achieving our vision to grow our business. The plan sets stretching goals for our environmental impact, including how we source raw materials and how consumers use our products. It has three big goals. Improving health and well-being for a billion people by 2020, reducing our environmental impact by half, and enhancing the livelihoods of millions. Just a few examples of how we have translated these commitments to India include, on nutrition, we have partnered with the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition to launch nutrition intervention program to improve the health and nutrition of two and a half million smallholder farmers and their families globally. The first program was implemented in India with the aim of benefiting more than 40,000 farming families, 200,000 people, in Unilever's business supply chain. Through the Hindustan Unilever Foundation, we operate the Water for Public Good program in 54 districts. The projects have generated more than 300 billion litres through improved supply and demand management and also generated more than 3.7 million person days of employment. And turning now to sustainable sourcing, in 2016, 100% of tomatoes used in Kisan ketchup continued to be sourced sustainably, in large part led by the public-private partnership between HUL and Maharashtra government. This summit could not have come at a better time. This forum has brought together the massive ecosystem of the Indian food processing industry to a focal point to facilitate dialogue between key stakeholders. I see it going a long way in placing India in the global map in food processing. I would like to congratulate the Government of India for taking this initiative. 
I am personally looking forward to learning a lot from the participants and going back even more energised about the India Foods Opportunity. We're very proud to be here today. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Among us, we have Mr. Peter Bune, COO Metro AG and CEO Metro Cash and Carry, a key player in modernizing food supply chains. May I request you, sir, to kindly speak on the occasion? Namaste. Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Minister of Food Processing Industries, Honorable Excellences, dear ladies and gentlemen. Let me express my sincere gratitude for your invitation to the World Food India. It's a great honor for me to be here and to take part in the opening ceremony of this impressive event. World Food India is of utmost importance for your country as well as for the global food community as the striking record of international participants here in Delhi reveals. World Food India provides a great opportunity to all of us, state and business actors, to get insights into the rich potential of the food, Indian food sector across the whole supply chain. <coughs> Metro Cash and Carry has realized these opportunities first in 2003, when we launched our operations in India. Since then, we have opened 24 wholesale centers across the country, with the last eight of them only in the past two years. One factor was, and remains, vital for this growth, listening to our customers. Professional customers like Kiranas or restaurant owners, and understanding their demands. And the diversity of demands in India is indeed surpassing those we experience in other metro countries. Many products that our customers love in the north of India, you will not find on our shelves in the south. This array of tastes reflects the impressive diversity of India's cuisine. It is actually this diversity in flavors and fragrances, but also in opportunities across the growing Indian food market, which World Food India invites us to explore in the next days. Food processing and manufacturing, retail and wholesale, including e-commerce and food service, like, for instance, delivery. The market is characterized by a mixture of well-established food hubs that are yet far from having unleashed their potential, as well as by new business models, which have just been launched and that are likely to transform the Indian food economy. World Food India will provide investors and partners insights to these potentials, but also into the regulatory and policy frameworks which your government, Prime Minister Modi, has set up in the recent years. These frameworks are featured by a strong commitment to the encouragement of foreign direct investment across the supply chain revealed in relaxed norms, by projects improving the infrastructure from testing labs to logistics, by making ease of doing business a key factor, and finally, by putting a focus of the importance of skilled and committed personnel. These striking developments are being empowered by bold decisions like demonetization as well as GST, which are, driving, uh, which are now driving a positive overall economic environment. In this changing environment, prospects for big retailers and wholesalers like Metro are immense. Metro is convinced of India's potential and strongly committed to expansion in your country. We prepare with innovative solutions on various levels, from supporting farmers as key actors in the supply chain to empowering the competitiveness of traditional Kirana stores 
whilst retail monetization for sizing these opportunities and for playing our role in the transformation of India's food market. Excellencies, dear ladies and gentlemen, as food is that integral part of our life that helps us connecting across levels, countries and cultures, so does World Food India. We are looking forward to inspiring exchanges among global and local industry leaders, policy makers, trade and farmers representatives. We are excited to join Explore Opportunities to empower India's food economy. And we are thrilled to be part of this journey, fostering India's position as a global food factory. Jannawat. Thank you, sir. Tata's are a leading Indian name globally. We have in our midst Mr. Noel Tata, Chairman of Trent Limited and Managing Director, Tata International. I invite Mr. Noel Tata to speak on the occasion. Honorable Prime Minister and other ministerial colleagues, excellencies and dignitaries, dear fellow panel members and attendees, ladies and gentlemen, it's indeed an honor to be here today amongst you. In a world that is globalizing at an ever-increasing pace, the Indian consumer continues to remain steadfast in their lifestyle choices. Be it apparel, entertainment or food, these habits have remained fairly constant over the last 40 years, despite a substantial increase in per capita income in the middle class and urban areas. Lifestyle changes are also resulting in an upsurge in demand for pre-prepared and pre-cooked ready-to-eat or easy-to-prepare solutions, with more and more women joining the workforce and an increased pressure on time. Indian cuisine is also gaining popularity around the world, particularly in the UK, US, and Middle East, fueled by a large diaspora who continue to enjoy their traditional cooking, as well as an increasing appetite for Indian flavors amongst local communities internationally. Both these phenomena indicate a strong demand for Indian food, both at home and abroad. And who knows better about producing authentic Indian food than us? Therefore, with a population of 1.3 billion people and a strong international demand, food processing is an extremely attractive Make in India opportunity. Anyone living in India would also be familiar with the fluctuating prices of food, vegetables, fruits and grains in particular. This is often caused by seasonal arrivals and mismatches in supply and demand because of the perishable nature of food ingredients. A large and vibrant food processing industry can play a vital role in moderating and averaging prices of produce by purchasing when arrivals are high and increasing supply when arrivals are low. I believe both farmers and consumers would welcome the stability in pricing that a vibrant food processing industry will offer. There is a need for significant new investments in this sector to increase our scale as our food processing industry is dominated by MSMEs, and to bring manufacturing units to a world-class level of technology and hygiene. Sir, the Government of India, through its ministry and the FSSAI, could play a very positive role by creating a certification system that would audit and recognize manufacturers who have achieved world-class standards. Such certification would help consumers and buyers from abroad make educated choices about the processed food they purchase. The Tata Group is committed to helping producers connect with consumers, be it tea, coffee, spices, or any other category. Our group companies have been in the forefront of bringing the Indian consumer closer to their lifestyle choices. The Tata Group will continue to invest technology and resources 
in the growing Indian food processing sector to strengthen the linkage between the Indian farmer and the consumer. Ladies and gentlemen, the Indian government is truly a partner to investors on this journey. By focusing on doubling farmer incomes by 2022 and its initiatives in supporting investment evidenced by the improvement in the latest ease of doing business report scores. The Honorable Prime Minister deserves compliments for both these initiatives. I would also like to compliment the Honorable Minister Srimati Badal for her innovative idea of promoting the food processing sector. I hope World Food India will set a new pace for this sector and will benefit all stakeholders. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Vyapari Samudai or Vyapar ko badhava dene ke uddeshya se mantrale ne investor portal Nivesh Bandhu tayar kiya hai jisme khadya prasanskaran kshetra se sambandhit sari jankari mil sakegi. The investor portal Nivesh Bandhu, which is being launched today, provides detailed information on India's district level resources and government policies and also offers a B2B platform for connecting farmers with processors and traders. Malaniya Pradhan Mantri se nivedan hai ki aap mouse click karke Nivesh Bandhu portal launch kare. India's food processing industry is on the path of rapid growth and transformation. To help you participate in this growth, the Ministry of Food Processing Industries launches Nivesh Bandhu, an investor portal that assists investors make informed investment decisions. This portal provides information on central and state governments' investor-friendly policies, agro-producing clusters, infrastructure, potential areas of investment, and ease of doing business in the food processing sector. The platform offers geotagged district level resources for food processing to help make investment decisions. And that's not all. The unique B2B trade platform on the portal allows the farmers, producers, traders and processors to connect with each other thereby ensuring better price and a short supply. Find your business opportunity in India across sectors through this dynamic platform. Come, explore the rich and flavorful world of India's food processing sector. Your investment and business decisions made easy. We are honored with the gracious presence of ministers from different countries whose support is a big encouragement to Indian food processing sector. I now invite Mr. Ivan Scalfaretto, Honorable Deputy Minister for Economic Development Italy, to offer his remarks. Honorable Prime Minister of India Modi, Honorable Minister for Food Processing Korbadal, distinguished dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, Namaskar. It is indeed a great honor for me to represent Italy at World India Food 2017, only six months after my mission to Delhi and Mumbai at the time in which I led a delegation that included more than 60 Italian companies and about 140 business people. Under the guidance of Honorable Prime Minister Modi, the Honorable Minister Ko Badal worked relentlessly to make this fair a milestone for future cooperation in the food processing sector. We are here today to share some of our best practices and to address, together with you, the challenges facing the food sector worldwide due to the climate change and extreme climatic conditions. My visit to World India Food follows shortly the most important event in the bilateral relationships between India and Italy in the last few years, the official visit 
paid last week by the Italian Prime Minister Paolo Gentiloni to testify the importance that Italy attaches to the development of our bonds with India in all sectors. Strengthening our mutual cooperation also in the food processing sector, which plays such a crucial role in increasing efficacy and productivity on the one hand, and in limiting post-harvest wastage on the other hand, is a shared priority based on common interests. The Italian food industry is internationally acknowledged as a beacon of excellence and high standards in terms of food quality and safety, technological innovation, environment protection, and positive social impact. Flexibility and long-standing tradition, taste and technology make the Italian food industry winning and effective along the entire global value chain. From farm to fork, this is the strap line shared amongst producers of any size, distributors, researchers, and consumers. We firmly believe that Italy is an ideal partner for India. India is one of the largest, and in many cases, the largest producer of pulses, mango, banana, buffalo meat, milk, ginger, rice, wheat, potato, cashew nuts, sugar cane, tea, just to name a few. Italy, on its side, developed some of the best technology and machinery to preserve and process food and then convert food waste into biogas to produce power and energy. Our food and beverage industry is the second highest ranking Italian manufacturing sector, which accounts for 8%, 8% of our national GDP, with an annual turnover of over 132 billion euros. We are here with the representatives of Federa Alimentare, our national association that groups together more than 7,000 companies in the food sector. Ucima, which is the Federation of the Italian Packaging Machinery Manufacturers, and Federuna Coma, which brings together the associations of manufacturers of all sorts of tractors, gardening machinery, self-propelled machines, and components. I'm sure that by interacting more intensively with each other, both Indian and Italian industries, which are always, by the way, available to share expertise and to, and to invest in local people, will be able to reap the full benefit of, it, of, of their huge potential. And I'm confident that our presence here at World Food India will be an important step in this direction. Many Italian firms are already actively participating in the Make in India program, and we're here to enhance our commitment. Both countries are endowed with a vibrant cultural life and very rich and diverse tradition, traditional cuisines. Food is culture. It is identity, community, family. It is survival and pleasure. Food is one of the most po powerful expressions of our relationship with nature. And all countries should work together to prevent food waste, an ethical and at the same time economic issue that depletes limited natural resources. Allow me to recall in this regard that our Expo, Expo Milan 2015, whose theme was Feeding the Planet, Energy for Life, was all about this. I'm therefore extremely glad to pledge in line with the Honorable Minister Korbadal's motto, no waste on my plate, and kindly invite you all to visit the Italian pavilion and attend our country session this afternoon. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, sir. I now request Mr. Peter Blazer, Honorable Vice Minister, Federal Ministry for Food and Agriculture, Germany, to present his address. Verehrter Premierminister Modi, liebe Frau Ministerin Badal, verehrte Ministerinnen und Minister, meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, der Welternährungstag am 16. Oktober hat es uns wieder ins Bewusstsein gerückt, 
815 Millionen Menschen auf der Welt sind nicht ausreichend mit Lebensmitteln und sauberem Trinkwasser versorgt. Die Ernährung der steigenden Weltbevölkerung ist damit eine Central Demand of our time. 2015 will be, will be 10 million people that the food industry is, is, one of the, is one of the most important future sectors. The main not only the increase in lifestyle, but also the resources and the use of, of raw material. Logistics, infrastructure, and in particular, yeah, the most important is the sharing of know-how and knowledge and year-long year -long partnership and work. I'm excited. I'm excited about the World Food India, and it provides an international platform for the food processing sector. It is, it is a big honor for us to be known as at the partner land, partner country. This is this is a big big trust for us for innovation and. Thank you so much for this invitation. Meine Damen und Herren, die Erfahrungen Deutschlands und der Europäischen Union insgesamt lehren. Ein großer Teil der the experience in India nachgelagerten Bereich erzielt. In Deutschland sichert der Ernährungssektor insgesamt 4,5 Millionen. The, the food sector in Germany provides a lot of work opportunities as well as in the automobile industry in Germany. Ungleich größer sind die Chancen auf dem The chances are bigger for the Indian subcontinent. Wird der hiesige Nahrungsmittelsektor im Jahr 2020 ein Umsatzvolumen von 2020 by the year 2020 to reach auch für ausländische Unternehmen for ein also for it's, it's a big potential and a big opportunity for countries and companies from different parts of the world to invest in India. Bereits wichtige Schritte für die Schaffung günstiger Rahmenbedingungen unternommen. It provides also steps to provide for the framework. This provides a platform for us to share the German know-how and knowledge. This provides an excellent platform, and I am convinced that the companies in our country will make use of this. This would provide a good basis for the relationship with the European Union and Indian, which will not only have economic advantages, and this is an important sign for the free trade. And, and this is a very important thing in this time. And I thank you all once again for the friendly invitation. And I wish all of you in India a, f a, a big success for the World Food India. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is Mr. Esben Lunde Larsen. Honorable Minister for Environment and Food, Denmark. May I invite you, sir, to kindly share your views with us? Thank you very much, Honorable Prime Minister Modi, Honorable Ministers, dignitaries, Your Excellences, and ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure being here to the opening of World Food India. And when you come from a small country like mine, we are about 5.7 million, we look with great admiration to the achievements in this great country. And to you, Minister Bedell, I would like to thank you for taking this initiative. We met recently at the World Food Summit in Copenhagen that I was hosting, 
And now I'm the guest and I would like to emphasize that it's a great honor for Denmark to be a partner country of this magnificent event, World Food India. It is an excellent opportunity to strengthen our relationship and cooperation with India on a wide range of areas within food and agriculture. Even though our countries are very different when it comes to size and history, I believe we have a lot to learn from each other. And being an agricultural nation, Denmark seeks to develop business relations and partnerships in the areas of food and agriculture for mutual benefits for our countries. As the Danish Minister for Environment and Food, I care about the global possibilities of creating a more sustainable growth and how we can help each other in pursuing this agenda. Therefore, I'm bringing one of the largest Danish business delegations to India, which includes Danish companies, organizations, and financial institutions with me. Companies within food processing technology, dairy, ingredients, feed, animal genetics, logistics, cold chain, and finally food and beverage. All of them are ready to partner with India with their know-how, technology, and products. And they are the real enablers that can help unleash the growth potential of this great nation. I believe that together, we can take great steps towards achieving the government of India's vision of doubling farmers' income by 2022, a great vision. For example, the productivity of Indian seeds and planting material could be enhanced by making Danish and Indian research institutions and agricultural universities collaborate for transfer of know-how. We are also looking to cooperate on cattle breeding to achieve higher milk productivity with the Indian indigenous breed. This can be achieved through genetics, feed and health management. And collaboration on processing technology could potentially increase productivity and reduce food loss. Because reducing food loss is a big and critical factor for the farmers. This was also one of the priorities that Minister Bedal pointed out in her speech at the World Food Summit in Copenhagen. This is a common agenda of ours, and we could be the front runners. To quote Mahatma Gandhi, if we could change ourselves, the tendencies in the world would also change, and we need not wait to see what others do. No. We do not have the time to wait, because the resources are limited so we need to optimize the food industry and the food value chain in order to reduce food loss. And as a matter of fact, I have brought along Danish companies that excel in this matter, not to mention the Danish Veterinarian Food Administration that is here to ensure we follow up on the government-to-government -government aspects. So do as Gandhi said, do not wait to see what others do. Join hands with Denmark, and I believe that the trade of food and expertise between India and Denmark has a lot to offer for both nations. We are eager to, ask to expand our cooperation with India so we can minimize loss of resources and maximize the collaboration of our countries and our agricultural output. Why? Because we who can are morally obligated to act. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. India's fast-growing food processing industry is a field of diverse opportunities and to facilitate investment decisions across the food processing value chain, the Ministry of Food Processing Industries has brought out a series of publications that give an in-depth analysis of the various aspects of the food processing sector in India. Mananiya Pradhan Mantri se nivedan hai ki aap kripya mouse click karke in publications ko e-release kare. To highlight investment opportunities in India's fast-growing food processing industry, 
and to facilitate investment decisions across the food processing value chain. The Ministry of Food Processing Industries has brought out a series of publications. These publications give an in-depth analysis of the various aspects of the food processing sector in India. Doing Business in India, Investor Guide for the Food Processing Sector, showcases India's growing investment ecosystem, providing a comprehensive overview of policies, regulatory and legal procedures to make it easy for investors to enter the Indian market. Technology and Equipment Manufacturing Opportunities in Food Processing Sector in India projects the huge demand of machinery likely to be created in various sectors of the food processing sector and the market size which will treble to 51 billion US dollars by 2025. Compendium of Financing Options for the Food Processing Sector guides investors on the various financing options for investments. Food Processing, a ready reckoner for FDI in India explains the recent initiatives of the government in FDI policy. Health supplements and nutraceuticals, emerging high growth sector in India, focuses on the exciting potential of the industry with 16% annual growth rates in this sub-segment. High growth segments of the Indian food and beverage industry provides investors with crucial insights about the exciting Indian market while focusing on the 10 fast-moving sub-sectors and their demand drivers. Food regulatory environment, inspiring trust, assuring safe and nutritious food. Highlights India's regulatory framework and its harmonization with international standards. These publications will empower the investors to take informed investment decisions and become a partner in India's growth story. They're available online on the investor portal Nivesh Bandhu and at the information kiosks at World Food India 2017. We are deeply honored to be joined by His Excellency, Mr. Maris Kuczynskis, Prime Minister of Latvia. I invite you, sir, to present your address. Honorable Prime Minister Modi, Honorable Food and Industry Minister Kaurav Badal, Excellencies, dear participants of World Food India, dear guests, it's a pleasure and delight for me to have been invited to the opening of the biggest food industry event in uh, Asia, Namaskar. And the message that I stress to my delegation and all of you is Latvia is ready to work in all areas and become a part of the India's economic transformation we'll make in India. Food processing is one of the key sectors of the Latvian economy. This sector of economy has been quick to transform itself and adjust its business practices to accommodate today's needs of consumers and expand in export markets and I would like to encourage the Indian businesses to transfer the best practices from Latvia and scale them up to the uh, Indian scale. This year Latvia has become one of the gourmet regions of Europe and uh, our cuisine has been largely influenced by the cuisines of different northern European nations. However, throughout centuries we have retained the main feature of our cuisine we put on our table what we can find in the nature. You go from different plants in the meadows to get your spice or your herbal tea. You go to the forest to get your game meat, mushrooms, berries. You go to rivers and lakes to get your fish and to the sea to get your fish. And India has a similar history and your cuisine is very diverse and versatile. Throughout centuries there's been a spice trade between India and Europe and has driven the age of discovery or exploration in Europe and food has always been a vital resource for any society and has been the common denominator of mankind and today's 
exhibition or fair is a global event. However, globalization in itself is not uh, a key to economic growth uh, and uh, well-being. We must also focus on food safety and security, on the access and availability of food, on the affordability of food, and therefore I'm very happy about World Food India as the place or the platform where to gain in information about innovations in the food industry. And one of the ways for uh, India to uh, grow uh, its food industry is to become a part of international supply chains, and Latvia has, is already building together with India a distribution center for the delivery of the, um, the food products from India to CIS and European countries. It's the new amber road that has united our nations throughout centuries. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you for uh, showing the house of hospitality to all my delegation and for inviting all my delegation, which includes food processing and logistics companies. World Food India is a wonderful platform for networking, B2B uh, negotiations and joint projects. And uh, Latvian cuisine is available. Uh, I'm sorry, Indian cuisine is available in Latvia. And I invite everyone to enjoy some Latvian food here at the um, uh, event uh, on the food. Thank you, Your Excellency. It is a very special privilege to have His Excellency, Mr. Sergei Sarksyan, President of the Republic of Armenia, whose gracious presence encourages us greatly. May I request you, sir, to kindly speak on the occasion? Your Excellency, Ministers, Ladies and gentlemen, first let me warmly congratulate people of India and distinguished Prime Minister Modi for the impressive organization of this fair, as well as to thank for the invitation extended to me to participate in this event. I warmly greet all the participants and wish them every success. The specialization and geographic diversity of the fair comes to demonstrate the mighty potential and role India plays in the global food market that resulted from the effective work carried out in the course of the 70 years of its independence. I avail myself of this opportunity and congratulate amicable people of India upon that historical jubilee. It is worth to note that India, a nation of history of several millennia, in such a brief period of time managed to register impressive achievements in the nation's political and social economic development, thus becoming one of the major moving engines of the world economy. We in Armenia, as a friend of India, are glad to register that due to its reforms and consistent work, India now is self-sufficient in terms of food. Moreover, it became one of the recognized leaders of food production on the global market and major producer and exporter of a number of agricultural goods on the global scale. It is further testified by this fair, which, it is needless to say, is the best platform for the exchange of the best practices established by India, as well as discovering new markets and establishing new partnerships. Processing of agricultural goods and export of food items is also important for Armenia's economic development. Armenian producers combine traditional experience and modern technologies for reprocessing fruits and vegetables and thus accumulated positive experience that yielded in a growing demand for the Armenian food industry products at the external markets. 
Our entrepreneurs are now initiating new their first steps in order to present their products also on the Indian market. In our view, exchanging best Armenian practices with the Indian entrepreneurs in the area of food production and cooperation to the effect may be promising. It may expand and increase the effectiveness of the fruit and vegetable reprocessing as well as contribute to establishing new enterprises and employment opportunities. We can also give a new impetus to Armenian Indian cooperation in the multilateral format. Since Armenia is a member of the Eurasian Economic Union and enjoys the regime of generalized scheme of preferences in its trade with the European Union, these entrepreneurs who would launch business activities in Armenia should have every opportunity to take advantage of the auspicious conditions provided by Armenia. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living in times when new Numerous issues need joint and comprehensive solutions. One of such issues is food security. At the 2015 UN Sustainable Development Summit, Armenia adopted declaration and agenda for sustainable development. Food security is one among its 17 goals, as is giving impetus to sustainable agricultural development. Armenia consistently works in order to achieve those objectives. Due to both our domestic policy and flexible external trade policy, we register new achievements every year in the course of fulfilling those goals. In conclusion, let me once again wish every success to the Cabinet of distinguished Prime Minister Modi in the course of realization of very promising reforms and projects they initiated, and the participants of this forum, very fruitful work. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Your Excellency. India's food processing sector has witnessed huge transformation over the past few decades. To showcase the evolution and dynamic growth of the sector, the Ministry of Food Processing Industry has brought out a unique coffee table book, A Journey Through the Indian Food Processing Sector. May I call upon the Honorable Prime Minister to kindly release the book? I request His Excellency, the President of Armenia, His Excellency, the Prime Minister of Latvia, and the Honorable Minister for Food Processing Industries, India, to kindly join in in releasing the book. Ladies and gentlemen, we now present a glimpse of the coffee table book. Indian cuisine has captured the taste buds of the world. To recognize its appeal and influence, a special series of commemorative stamps has been issued. Mananiya Pradhan Mantri se nivedan hai ki aap Bharatiya Vyanjan par Dark Vibhag dwara tayar kiye gaye smarak dark ticket ka vimochan kare. I request His Excellency the President of Armenia, His Excellency the Prime Minister of Latvia, 
and the Honorable Minister for Food Processing Industries India to kindly join the Honorable Prime Minister in releasing the stamps. The Honourable Prime Minister's August presence at the inaugural of World Food India inspires the world, the food processing sector to reach new heights, taking advantage of the huge opportunities India offers. Mananiya Pradhan Mantri Shri Narendra Modi se nivedan hai ki aap kripya mark darshan dete huye sabha ko sambodhit karein. Excellencies, captains of businesses and industry, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to be a part of this August gathering of global leaders and decision makers of the food processing sector. I welcome you all to World Food India 2017. This event will provide you a glimpse of the opportunities that await you in India. It will showcase our potential in the food processing value chain. It will provide a platform to connect with various stakeholders and collaborate for mutual prosperity. And it will present to you some of our most delightful cuisine, which has stimulated straight birds across the world. Ladies and gentlemen, India's strength in agriculture are many and diverse. The second largest arable land area and as many as 127 diverse agroclimatic zones give us global leadership in a number of crops like bananas, mangoes, guavas, papayas and okra. We are slackened globally in terms of production of rice, wheat, fish, fruits, and vegetables. India is also the world's biggest milk producer. Our horticulture sector has shown an average growth rate of 5.5% annually over the last so many years. For centuries, India had welcomed traders from distant lands. We came in search of our distinctive spices that travels to India often shaped the course of history. Our trade synergies with Europe and Southeast Asia through the spice route are well known. Even Christopher Columbus was attracted to Indian spices and reached America as he searched for an alternative sea route to India. <laughs> Food processing is a way of life in India. It has been practiced for ages even in the humblest of households. Simple home-based techniques such as fermentation have resulted in the creation of our famous pickles, papas, chutneys and murabbas that now excite both the elite and the masses across the world. Ladies and gentlemen, 
let us turn for a while to the big picture. India is today one of the fastest growing economies of the world. The goods and service tax or GST has eliminated the multiplicity of taxes. India has jumped 30 ranks this year in the world, world Bank doing business rankings. This is the highest ever improvement for India and the highest jump for any country this year. From a rank of 142 in 2014, we have now reached the top 100. India was ranked number one in the world in 2016 in greenfield investment. India is also rapidly progressing on the Global Innovation Index, Global Logistics Index, and Global Competitiveness Index. Starting a new business in India is now easier than ever before. Procedures for obtaining clearances from various agencies have been simplified. Archaic laws have been repealed and the burden of complacencies has been reduced. I now turn specifically to food processing. The government has undertaken a range of transformation initiatives. India is now the most preferred investment destination in this sector. It is a priority sector in our Make in India program. 100% foreign direct investment is now permitted for trading, including through e-commerce of food products manufactured or produced in India. A single window facilitation that shall provide provides handholding for foreign investors. There are attractive fiscal incentives from the union and the state governments. Loans to food and agro-based processing and cold chains are classified under priority sector lending, making them easier and cheaper to obtain. The unique portal, Nivesh Bandhu, our investor friend that we have just launched brings together information on central and state government policies and incentives provided for the food processing sector. It maps resources up to the local level with processing requirements. It is also a platform for businesses, networking for farmers, processors, traders, and logistics operators. Friends, private sector participation has been increasing in many segments of the value chain. However, more investment is required in contract farming, raw material sourcing, and creating agricultural linkages. Many international companies in India have taken a lead in contract farming initiatives. This is a clear opportunity for global supermarket chains considering India as a major outsourcing hub. On one hand, 
there are opportunities in post harvest management like primary processing and storage preservation infrastructure cold chain and refrigerated transportation on the other hand there is immense potential for food processing and value addition especially in niche area such as organic and fortified foods increasing urbanization and a growing middle class are resulting in an ever growing demand for wholesome processed food let me share just one statistic over a million passengers over a million passengers have a meal on a train in india every single day each one of them is a potential customer for the food processing industry such is the scale of opportunity that is waiting to be tapped ladies and gentlemen lifestyle disease is raising consciousness globally about the nature and quality of food consumption there is a growing aversion to the use of artificial colors chemicals and preservatives india can provide solutions and offer a win win partnership the combination of traditional indian food with modern technology processing and packaging can help the world rediscover the health benefits and refreshing taste of indian food ingredients such as turmeric ginger and tulsi to name just a few the perfect blend of hygienic nutritious and tasty processed food with the added benefits of preventive health care can be produced economically here in india the food safety and standards authority of india has been engaged in ensuring that processed food made in india matches globally global quality standards the harmonization of the food advice standards with codex and the building of robust testing and laboratory infrastructure will go a long way in creating and enabling environment for food businesses ladies and gentlemen the farmers whom we respectfully call our annadata of the providers of food are center to our efforts in food processing we have a state stated target of doubling farmer income within 5 years recently we launched a national level program the pradhan mantri kisan sampada yojana to create world class food processing in infrastructure this is expected to leverage investment of 5 billion us dollars benefit to 2 million farmers and generate more than half a million jobs over the next 3 years the creation of mega food park is a key component in this scheme through these food parks we aim to link agro processing clusters with key key production centers this will offer immense value proposition in crops such as potato pineapple oranges and apples farmer groups are being encouraged to set up units in this parks 
thereby reducing wastage and transportation costs and creating new jobs. Nine such parks are already operational, and more than 30 others are in the process of coming up across the country. To improve last mile delivery, we are improving governance by encouraging accesses to digital technology. We plan to link our villages to broadband connectivity within a clear time frame. We are digitalizing land records and providing various services to the people on mobile platforms. These steps are building momentum towards real-time transfer of information, knowledge, and skills to farmers. The ENA, our national agriculture e-market, is connecting our agriculture markets nationwide, thereby giving our farmers the benefit of competitive pricing and freedom of choice. In the true spirit of cooperative and competitive federalism, our state governments have also aligned with the efforts of the union government to simplify processes and procedures. Many states have come up with attractive food processing policies to attract investment. I urge each state of India to identify at least one food product for specialization. Similarly, each district can also select some food items for production and one item for specialization. Ladies and gentlemen, today our strong agriculture base provides as a solid launch pad to create a vibrant food processing sector. Our vast consumer base, rising incomes, favorable investment climate, and a government dedicated to ease of doing business is all making India the place to be for the global food processing fraternity. Each subsector of the food industry in India offers immense opportunity. Let me give you some illustrations. The dairy sector has emerged as a vital area for the rural economy. We now aim to take this to the next level by increasing production levels of multiple products based on milk. Honey is nature's gift to mankind. It offers several valuable byproducts such as bee wax. It has the potential to increase farm incomes. Currently, we rank sixth in the production and export of honey. India is now ripe for a sweet revolution. India contributes over 6% of global fish production. We are the world's second largest exporter of shrimps. India exports fish and fisheries product to about 95 countries. We aim to make a big leap in the ocean economy through the blue revolution. Our focus is on development of untapped areas such as ornamental fisheries and trout farming. We also wish to explore new areas like pearl farming. Our commitment to sustainable development is at the heart of our trust 
फॉर ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग सिक्किम इन नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न इंडिया हैज बिकम इंडिया फर्स्ट फुली ऑर्गेनिक स्टेट द एंटायर नॉर्थ एरिया नॉर्थ ईस्ट ऑफर्स ऑपॉर्चुनिटी टू क्रिएट फंक्शनल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फॉर ऑर्गेनिक प्रोड्यूसिस फ्रेंड्स इन ऑर्डर टू बी सक्सेसफुल इन इंडियन मार्केट्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग इंडियन फूड हैबिट्स एंड टेस्ट इज अ की रिक्वायरमेंट टू गिव यू जस्ट वन एग्जाम्पल मिल्क बेस्ड प्रोडक्ट्स एंड फ्रूट जूस बेस्ड ड्रिंक्स आर एन इंटेंसिक पार्ट ऑफ इंडियन फूड हैबिट्स दैट इज वाई आई हैव बिन सजेस्टिंग टू मैन्युफैक्चर ऑफ एरिटेड ड्रिंक्स द पोटेंशियल ऑफ ब्लेंडिंग फाइव परसेंट फ्रूट जूस इन दर प्रोडक्ट्स फूड प्रोसेसिंग ऑल्सो होल्ड सोल्यूशन टू न्यूट्रिशन सिक्योरिटी फॉर एग्जाम्पल अवर कोर्स ग्रेन्स and millets have high nutrition value they can also withstand adverse agro climate conditions they can be called nutrition rich and climate smart crops can we take up a venture based on this this will raise incomes of some of the poorest of the poor farmers and all also enhance our nutrition levels such products shall of course find resonance across the world can we link our potential to the world's requirements can we link indian traditions with the future of mankind can we connect india's farmers with markets around the world these are some questions that i wish to leave you with i'm confident that world food india will help us to take some concrete steps in this direction it will also provide valuable insights in our rich culinary landscape and highlights our ancient wisdom of food processing i am also happy to note that the department of post and has released a set of 24 commemorative postage stamps on this occasion to illustrate the diversity of indian cuisine ladies and gentlemen i invite each one of you to become a part of the existing growth journey of india's food processing sector i assure you of my whole hearted support whenever required come invest in india the place with ultimate the place with unlimited opportunity for farm to fork the place to produce process and prosper for india and for the world thank you thank you very much thank you sir We now conclude the inaugural session of World Food India 2017. I thank the distinguished